All right. Shalom out there. <coughs> All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kodash. All right. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. All right. This live stream is going to be entitled HOI Completely Botched Romans 11 Chapter. All right. There's no other way to say it. And let me just say from the beginning, you know how Jake get when you when you say their names or you show their face or you talk about a video they made, they get all messed up and start acting like you hate them. Just for the record, we don't hate you guys, but you was going off. Romans 11, you going off, period. And I don't know any other way to say it. I don't know how it's going to come out, but it's hard to imagine that you call yourself accomplished teachers and you breaking down Romans 11 so terribly. Okay. Now there's a video that was put up by the elder Karakazar from GMS Vegas. This is his page right here. <clears throat> and he was uh responding to the HOI did a video entitled their video was entitled HOI Georgia Romans 11 Breakdown. We don't teach the popular doctrines. And I'm gonna tell you right away <coughs> when you hear Jake saying that, these guys actually have a teaching where and that's why when we mention false prophet Israelites, we always throw HOI in the group. You, you can't help it because they got a fake, uh, uh, faulty doctrine. You know, for the longest time, Zabak has maintained that Cornelius was not an Israelite. He was a, a, a Gentile. These guys got a doctrine of confusion. They'll say on the one hand, the kingdom is for Israel. Only Israelites can be saved. But some kind of way, Gentile uh, Cornelius was, was from another nation. That's completely goddamn confusion, man. Now here they go with the Romans 11 so-called breakdown when you broke that down completely wrong you botched it and you bring confusion man straight up there's no fucking way that and, and salaki you know my language or whatever we get mad but there's no way you can say that romans 11 is talking about the other nations but then some kind of way they don't get salvation i mean i don't understand that that's complete confusion and uh the elder brother's video that he made is entitled <clears throat> i would provoke them to jealousy was it actual heathen nations or Israelite outcasts? Right? That was his, his video title. <clears throat> I'm gonna put a link up to his video. And you brothers, you know, go there and watch it if you hadn't done it already, because I did share it. <clears throat> but we're gonna listen to an excerpt from his video. But before we do that, let's go into a few opening scriptures. And that's what I mean. Why we always throw HOI in the group when we mention false prophet Israelites, we always gotta throw them in there too, because they completely be messing shit up and they and, and in my opinion they don't have the holy spirit you can't have the holy spirit breaking the scriptures down wrong like that completely now this is the word botched because that's part of the title right hoi which stands for house of israel completely botched romans 11 this is the definition botched. it says of a task carried out badly or carelessly you can't get more plain than that it says here um just hold on here. You're getting these pop-ups. <clears throat> it's botched a bad word. It says right here, interestingly, the word botch originally meant the opposite of what it means today. The Middle English word botching meant to mend or repair. As a noun, botch means an embarrassing mistake or something that is done poorly, especially due to lack of skill. And if you lack skill that bad that you're breaking down chapters that you shouldn't know, Right, that you should by now have understood if you're breaking it down that bad, it's because you have a lack of skill. And if you have a lack of skill, that means you lack the Holy Spirit. And that's from where I'm sitting. Them guys don't have the Holy Spirit. They're basically a group that's it's, it's almost like they have no real biblical knowledge at all. It's that ridiculous. I'm gonna gotta read here a couple of scriptures. Let's get Romans 16, verse 17. It's embarrassing for men to say to be out there doing all that. You know, doing all the antics, teaching, doing all that, getting in people's faces, and then your ass can't even break down Romans 11. Romans 16 and 17. Now, I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. If you watch Great Millstone, you have no business watching HOI, these other groups. You should avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. And you simple as hell if you watch them breaking the scripture down wrong. There's no way. 
how can you watch Great Millstone who says salvation is only for the Israelites and then watch HOI who says Cornelius was an, of another nation? Because the central theme throughout the whole Bible is what? That the Israelites were scattered into all nations. These are the Gentiles, the Israelite foreigners being brought back by the word of the Lord. You take your simple ass in the Romans 11 and try to find it and make it say this to other nations. Amazing. We're going to get into it. Just give me a quick second. I just want to kind of get in this, <coughs> get this, you know, straight to the point. Now I want to read 1 Corinthians 14 and 33. I'm going to start at 32. It says, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. All the ancient prophets come back. If you were a prophet in the, in the old days, you're going to come back in the reincarnation as a prophet in your life. For the Most High is not the author of confusion, but of peace. As in all churches of the saints. The Most High is not the author of confusion. How in the hell can James 1 and 1, right, talk about the 12 tribes scattered abroad, Acts 2 and 5, going to the Israelites scattered to all nations, the central theme, all those books, even the book of Romans was written, the Israelites dwelling among the Romans. Same with Ephesians and Corinthians. And you turn around and say that Romans 11 is talking about other nations. That's goddamn confusion. It doesn't even make sense. You can read Romans 9. When Edomites come at them, <coughs> they'll go into Romans 9 and show all these things are only for the Israelites and then turn right around and say Romans chapter 11 is talking about the other nations. It don't make any sense. Before we go in and into it, let's go and listen to the brother to a short excerpt from the brother's video. And you can share, <coughs> you can share in the anger when you hear this stupidity. Yeah, a couple of guys up there on the panel stuttering who don't know the scriptures man i mean damn let's listen in a little bit here all right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna let i'm gonna let the video play so you can listen because you know he was right about that particular part of him addressing both israel and you know uh the gentile but we know that that gentile is actually the israelite foreigners who lost their weight and were allowed to come into the fold based off of their faith. So let's get into that. Go ahead. Verse 10. Verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Right. Is it, are, they, are they completely gone? We told you that in the beginning. No, they're not. Go ahead. God forbid, God forbid, right? But rather through their false salvation is come on to the Gentiles. Uh oh. Now here we go. Now this is this is where they say most the, the popular doctrine in Israel. Mm -hmm. Okay, they say, well, listen, that's the fall of the Israelites. The the fall of the Israelites is to the is the southern kingdom to bring in the northern kingdom. That don't make no damn sense. We're going to show you it don't make no sense. Go ahead. To provoke and jealousy. Right. So now, for the northern kingdom to provoke the southern kingdom to jealousy. <clears throat> I got to stop it right there. Because when you hear these guys start talking about any group, we don't teach the popular doctrine. See that right there so they could seem righteous. They'll say, even though. We Israelites, and we believe the kingdom is only for the Israelites. We ain't going to teach the popular doctrine that Romans 11 is only for Israel. We got to teach it the right way. And you're teaching it wrong. You're teaching it wrong. Let me grab a quick scripture. This is Romans 10 and verse 1. Right? It says, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to the Most High for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of the Most High, but not according to knowledge. H-O-I, you got a lot of zeal. I give you credit. Y'all go out there, you teach the word, but it's not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of the Most High's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves into the righteousness of the Most High. And that's the bottom line. Because you're trying to be something that you're not. You're trying to come off as these guys that got these mysteries and you don't have the mysteries. You want to be adored by the Israelites. That's really what, what I see. When you look into that video... It's dead in there. It's spiritless. The spirit, the Holy Spirit is not dwelling among them. That dead, boring shit. Let's listen to some more of this garbage. This shit is dead up in there, man. Boring. The, the fall of the Israelites is to 
the, 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 the southern kingdom to bring in the northern kingdom. <laughs> that don't make no damn sense. Make no damn sense. We're going to show you. Well, Great Millstone don't teach that. We don't teach that the fall was for the southern kingdom and, and uh, the bringing in of the northern kingdom. No, we don't teach that. So I don't know where the hell you got that from. Notice how loud it got when they think they got a point. <laughs> Listen to this. My God, feed the flock of the slop, whose possessors slay them and hold them not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Yahweh, for I am rich. For I am what? I am and rich. rich. And they that sold us said, Blessed be Yahweh, for they are rich. The fall of us was the riches of the world. They sold us and they, they robbed us and got rich. Right. That's the precept on that. So he think because he found a precept that said riches in the world, that means Romans 11. When we, we're going to go read it, that, that's talking about the other nations. That's goddamn stupid. Stupid. Yeah. The fall of us was the riches for the northern kingdom. Right. Uh, uh, <laughs> it don't make, it don't make no sense. sense. It don't make no sense. What? The fall of the southern kingdom gave Poppy the bodegas. <laughs> it gave Simeon the bodegas. It gave Ephraim the bodegas. The number spots. What? What's the what's the riches of the world? That don't make sense. It, it make has sense to, it, because Benjamin still got the jerk up. Right. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> it, it it doesn't make sense because all. Now, I don't know where they were going with. That. Yeah, I don't know what he was going with it either, Elder. That's completely damn stupid. <coughs> anyway, that's about all I can take of that. You can see, when anytime you try to use logic when you're teaching something, first off, I don't know where they got that doctrine from that, you know, maybe some other Israelite group teach that. I don't know. But we've always maintained that Romans 11 was talking about the Israel of the Holy Land and the Israelite foreigners cast off into all nations, right? Now, the falling of us was the riches of the world, but that ain't got nothing to do. It really ain't got nothing to do with what the chapter's about. When you go into that chapter, let's go there. Let's look at Romans 11. Yeah, like the brother says, it's goddamn confusion, man. What are you talking about? When you read these scriptures with, with understanding, not trying to <coughs> say we, you know, we all that or nothing. But the apostles taught us better than that. First off, when you go into the book of Romans, let's go here. Romans 1, we can get it up here. Just hold on here, brothers. Doggone. <clears throat> and I want to just do this, you know, quick and to the point. And really, all you need to do when you go into Romans 11, if you go and look up what the branches, who the branches are, the ones that were broken off, that tells you who the whole chapter is about. Romans 1 and 1. Paul, a servant of Yahweh Shahamashiach, called to be an apostle, separated into the gospel of the Most High. Verse 6, verse 7, to all that be in Rome. Beloved of the Most High, called to be saints. The whole book is to the Israelites among the Romans. First off, why in the middle of Romans 11 is he going to pop up and start talking about the other nations? And then at the top, it says Israel is not cast away. Romans 11 and 1. I say then, has the Most High cast away his people? Yahweh forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. The Most High has not cast away his people, which he foreknew. The whole chapter is about the Israelites. It's never talking about other nations. What ye not, what the scripture saith of Elias, how he make his intercession to the Most High against Israel. Then we get down here. Let's jump down because it goes into the elect and the rest of Israel was blinded, right? <coughs> now, verse 11, Romans 11 and 11. This is what they read. I say then, have they stumbled that they shall fall? Yahweh forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles. Which Gentiles? You can't be out there preaching the word, saying that the kingdom is only for Israel, but then you saying that Gentiles is talking about the other nations. Because that means they can be saved too. And if that means they can be saved, who going into slavery? What you talking about? You got no idea what you're even saying, man. You just up there, I don't know what's going on. 
These Jakes don't they have no idea what the hell is going on, man. I say then have they stumbled that they should fall? Yeah, how forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles for provoke for to provoke them to jealousy. Now, for the longest time, we've heard these other Israelites saying that the most high gave the other nations the king, you know, whatever, to make us jealous. So they can be saved. Yeah, that don't make any sense. The most high set up four major empires on the earth that were ruled. We've been in exile. You forget about that part. We've been in exile. They're already in their salvation. What are you talking about? They don't get a, an, an inheritance with us. Read Romans 9 and tells you that. I ain't going to go into all the precepts. I'm just going to hit a few. But, I mean, it's really ridiculous that you, Israelites is, I don't get it, man. I don't get it. Let's keep reading a bit here. Now, they don't understand the jealousy. Let's first, let's go into that a little bit. Let's read down a little bit. We're going to get into the jealousy. It says, now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If you saying that Paul is the, is the uh, apostle to the other nations, you teaching it like the Christians teach. Let's get first, let's get into this jealousy thing, right? Let me drop this. Let's go to Romans 10, because it tells you all in Romans, and we know who the book is even to. Let's go to Romans 10 real quick. Let's go back to Romans 10. I'm going to hit a few points here. <clears throat> At the top, it says, the word of faith brings salvation. Salvation to who? It started out talking about the Israelites, right? Let's get down here to verse Romans 10. And it goes all into how, the, you know, the men going to be set to preach the word. The word going to be heard into the four corners of the earth. Why? Because the Israelites are scattered to the four corners of the earth. Verse 19. But I say, did Israel not, did not Israel know? First, Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. And by a foolish nation, I will anger you. Who is this that are not a people? It's the Israelites that were not a people. Deuteronomy. Uh, I think it's 32. Just hold on here. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 32. Right? Yeah. In verse 21. It's talking about the Israelites. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not the most high. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I, pro I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Who is that? The Israelite farmers. After we lost our heritage, right? If we, after we lost our heritage, we were cast off into all nations. And we, we, we basically are not a people. We've been known as the 12 lost tribes of Israel. Let's go to 1 Peter. And it's going to answer it for you. Let's go to 1 Peter. Hold on here. <clears throat> Shalom, Elder Apostle Bar, and the other brothers on the comment board. And I meant to go to chapter 2. So lock it. Like I said, I just want to get through this kind of quick as I can. So you brothers forgive me if I uh, don't hit the comment board as much as usual. All right? 1 Peter, chapter 2. <clears throat> and verse 9 i believe yeah it says right here first peter 2 and 9 but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praise of him that who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light which in time past were not a people but are now the people of the most high which have not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy it's all about the israelites and the Israelite foreigners, that's all it's talking about. It ain't talking about no other group of people, you know, none of that. Let's go back to Romans 10, where we were. I want to hit that quick. Now, I'm going to show you some of that jealousy. Because Jake hit that word jealousy, and you immediately think it's talking about the other nations. Most High gave favor to the other nations, so we would be jealous. That's dumb. That is completely dumb. Back here, Romans 10. And uh, 19 again, but I say, did not Israel know? First, Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation, I will anger you. Okay, so let's drop this Romans 10. And I'm going to go over here to Acts. Let's go to Acts chapter 14 first. And we're going to show you some of that jealousy because when Paul was a disciple of, you know, when he became the disciple of the Gentiles, Israelite foreigners. The Israelites in the Holy Land, they got jealous. They was getting all mad about it. First, Acts 14 and 1. 
And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together to the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude of Jews and also of, of the Greeks believed. Now, if you look up this word Greeks, it's going to tell you that it's uh, uh, the other, the Greeks, like, like the Edomites, right? It ain't going to say Edomites, but it's going to say non, non-Jews, which is going off. Because we know that in Acts 2, you had all these men gathered together. You can go there for lack of time. Now we'll go there now. But in Acts 2 and 5, it named all these people who were Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven, right? It says, but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles, Israelite foreigners, and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. All right. Now we're going to hold right there. Let's go to Acts 13. Just hold on here. So lock here. I got to drop this. And we're going to come, you know, we're going to jump around a little bit. Let me show you some of that jealousy that was spoken of. Just hold on here. Okay. <clears throat> Acts 13. Let's look up here. It said, Paul turns to the Gentiles, which are Israelite foreigners. Acts 13, 44. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of the Most High. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. What's another word for envy? Jealousy. They were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. They were filled with jealousy. When they saw the Israelite foreigners from all them different lands that they spoke about in, in, verse, in chapter 2, which I'm going to have to go there and read that, they was getting all upset about it. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of the Most High should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, Isaiah, what is that, 49 and 6, or Isaiah 42, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Why to the ends of the earth? Because Israelites are scattered unto the ends of the earth. That's all it's speaking of. Let's go to Acts 2 real quick. Acts chapter 2, right? <clears throat> I'm just going to jump here at verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. And they were being called Gentiles. Now, when this noise was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in their own language. They didn't even speak Hebrew. Let's jump in here in verse uh, 8. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and the Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, the stra uh, strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, all these different Israelites from these other, other nations, other lands, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of the Most High. And that's got to be a basis. You got to understand that. When you teach the scriptures, we know that the Israelites were scattered into all these different nations. Right, and we've been called Gentiles. You got the other nations are called Gentiles too, but you have the Israelite foreigners. You can't forget that. So when you go into Romans eleven and you start talking about it, talking about the other nations, you completely going off. Let's go back to lock you. So now let's go back to Romans thirteen and read that. I mean uh, Acts thirteen and read that again, if I may. Acts 13. <coughs> Excuse me. No, oh, I lost my place. Where was I at? <clears throat> and it's all other kind of hints all in this in this chapter as well. Yeah, Paul turns to the Gentiles. But when the Jews saw the multitude, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. That was the jealousy, man. They were filled with envy. That was some of the jealousy, rather. <coughs> now, I want to drop this. And I want to go back to Romans 11, if I may. And let's read on down there a little more. It's a lot of great scriptures on the comment board, brothers. Please excuse me. All right. But I just, like I said, I, this is one of those lessons that it could go on and on and on. Now, I want to go back to Romans 11. All right. So, we're back in Romans 11. <clears throat> and we're going to read 11 again. I say they have they stumbled that they should fall. The most high forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. And the jealousy happened. They were filled with envy. 
Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you, Gentiles, Israelite foreigners, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, Israelite foreigners, I magnify mine office. <clears throat> if by any means I may provoke to emulation them that which are my flesh and might save some of them, but if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, and when you look at this word, world right here, it's cosmos, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Now, it's going to explain all that that they, they read and that we read. When you re get in here, you start to understand, for if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. Who's the only people in the scripture known as holy? Israelites. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Deuteronomy 14 and 2. Right? First Peter 2 and 9 on down. You're yeah, a holy nation. All right? A holy priesthood. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Who are these branches? All of a sudden, is the scripture just about to jump and start talking about the uh, Israelites again? It was talking about other nations. Now it's talking about Israelites? Of course not. It's always been talking about the Israelites. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them, and with them partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree. And we're going to prove these branches, who they are. Boast not against their branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou will say then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, okay, well, who are these branches? Jeremiah. <clears throat> Let's see here. I think it's Jeremiah 11. It's going to tell you who the branches are. How in the hell can you go and read a precept that tells you who the branches are, but then still try to assign it to the other nations? At the top, it says the broken covenant. You see it? Jeremiah 11. And I'm going to start at 12. Uh, uh, I'm 13. For according to the number of thy cities were thy gods, O Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem, have ye set up altars to that shameful thing, even altars to burn incense unto Baal. Right? You see what Israel was doing? Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or a prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry to me for their trouble. What have my beloved to do in mine house, seeing she hath wrought lewdness with many, and the holy flesh? It's passed from thee. When thou doest evil, then thou rejoices. Listen, the Lord called thy name a green olive tree, fair and of goodly fruit. With the noise of a great tumult, he hath kindled fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee hath pronounced evil against thee for the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah, which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger and offering incense unto Baal. The branches are the Israelites. The branches broken off. Israelites. Same group. You see that? Same people. Why didn't they go to that and read that? Back over here. Romans eleven nineteen. 19. Thou wilt say then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off. Didn't we just read that? And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if the most I spare not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of the most high on them which fail severity, but toward thee goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, other, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. Right? And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For the most high is able to graft them in again. When were the other nations that were part of the olive tree? They never were. How can they be grafted in again for the first time? It's talking about who? Those that were always Israelites. We just didn't know it. We was cast off into all nations. All you, I mean, I don't see how you get the other nations from that. It says, for if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, you were cut out of the olive tree and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Do you not understand words? Own olive tree. And then, it, and, and, and this, listen to the rest. For I will not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness and parties happen to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so, what's and so? It's going with what was written above it. And so all Israel shall be saved. What? 
So wait a minute. The scripture was just now talking about the other nations, but then it just pops in again and just start talking about the Israelites again. The whole chapter is talking about the Israelites. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. He, how do we get back to the father? When you start asking these questions, how do we get back to the father? We was cut off for our sin and our iniquity. We were cut off. The branches of it were broken off. We were cut off, right? Cast into all nations, exiled from our home. How do we get away back? The Savior came and died so that we could be uh, uh, grafted back in, brought back to our father, adopted back into our family. Easy stuff. Easy stuff. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. How do we turn away ungodliness from us? By cleansing us of our sins, dying for our sins. For this is my covenant unto them when I should take away their sins. If you're talking about Israel right here, taking away our sins, well, what about the other nations? Where's their covenant? Where is something to take away their sins? They're not mentioned in this chapter, man, as far as uh, what we're speaking on. They're not mentioned there. It's all about the Israelites. <clears throat> it's all about the Israelites. And I mean, that's that's pretty much it. There's other chapters we could get. There's other verses we could read going all into it. But that's really it. Why don't they get that? Well, you know, ain't no need of me saying that. You know what I mean? We know the reason why they don't. But these Israelite groups, they're so adamant, like they know what they're talking about. The centralized theme of the whole Bible. When you go into James 1, the Israelites scattered all over, right? God. And you brothers, again, forgive me, y'all got a lot of great apostle bar is killing it. You got a lot of great info on the, on the comment board. <coughs> but, you know, just wasn't able to get to it. Let's see here. Yeah, and he, he put it up. Daily edification, exaltation three, Jeremiah eleven sixteen. The Lord has called thy name a green olive tree, fair and of goodly fruit. With the noise of a great tumult, he hath kindled fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. You got to be taking crazy pills not to be able to put that together. What are these, uh, you know, it's, I don't know. Elder, um, Elder Yashawama, the covenant was never uh, uh, open to heathen, never. Never, Jacob, never. <laughs> Daily edification, exhortation 3, Psalms 147, 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and judgments unto Israel. What? Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, oh, it, it makes you angry, but you try not to, you know, get like that. But when I saw the uh, Elder Karatas video, I was just like too mad. Like, I don't get it. But that, again, that's why we start mentioning false prophet Israelites. We always throw HOI in there for stuff like that, man. We ha you have to do it. See, when you go to scriptures, let's, let's, let's get a couple. Even if you go to Isaiah, right? So like, yeah. Even if you go to Isaiah 11. When the Lord started talking about, and when you mentioned the second coming of Yahweh Shah coming and saving, you know, the elect from all nations, it never talks about heathen. You got to take all that into account. You can't just say in Romans 11, it's talking about the other nations, but then stick to the rest of the doctrine. You can't do that. That's confusion. That's confusion. You're going to have people all confused, but that's how you know that these are not men of the Lord. They're not real teachers of the Bible. Everything got to match. You can't jump back and say, Oh, well, the other nations ain't got no inheritance in the kingdom, but you, you don't oh, you don't try to open up the covenant for them. The restored remnant, Isaiah 11 and 11, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. If you say in Romans 11, it's talking about other nations, the Gentiles, then they got to be a part of this. And we know this talking about Israelites, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam. And from Shinar and from Amath and from the islands of the sea. These are all Israelites. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, which shall gather and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. All these people are Israelites. They Israel, they Judah and Israel that's been dispersed into the four corners of the earth, pursuant to Deuteronomy 28 64. In other scriptures. Oh, God, I messed that up. 
And them guys, they're going to be all mad and say we hate no whatever you're going to say. It don't make no difference. But you can't expect to put a badly botched breakdown like that out there in the world and nobody say anything. We know the other Israelite groups going to stay in their lane. We can't do that. We got to say what the Most High said to do. We got to do what the Lord said to do. Deuteronomy 28, 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which is why we have to preach the message of repentance to you. Tell you come back to your heritage. You worshiping, worshiping Diana of Ephesus and all these other false gods, white, Jesus, Allah, Buddha. We got to tell you to come back. You've been in the other lands, shaving your heads, wearing dreadlocks, wearing togas, being faggots, doing whatever you was doing, right? You was being Gentiles. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. Even the Savior spoke on it and said you're going to be in other lands. What is it? 21, Luke 21. <clears throat> Luke 21, verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be tried down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. We're going to be cast away, cast off into other nations. And to these four major empires, or are, 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 to they go down, and the Lord comes back and he sets up the kingdom of heaven. We're going to be cast off into captivity. And while we're there, we're going to pick up the false gods, the idols, the ways of these countries, the ways of these, these uh, captivities in which we've been in. That's why the Lord sent his Holy Spirit for us to repent, to turn back to his ways. Baruch chapter 2, right? In the land of your captivity, you shall think upon my name and return for your stiff necks and your wicked deeds. All these things. It's too easy. Too easy. But you know what? Like the scriptures say, knowledge is easy to him that understandeth. You got to have the Holy Spirit. That's why I said it. Without the understanding of the mysteries, you through. Elder Apostle Bar said they got to rightly divide the word. And we're so thankful that we had, that the Most High sent teachers to teach us. Because look at look at how you could be if you didn't have that. Daily edification, exhortation three, even in the days of our Lord, there was the southern and northern kingdom, that is the tribes of the Jews and the tribes of the northern kingdom, even though most of the northern kingdom came, came to the Americas. It's going to be a lot more edification coming out on this, I'm sure. And I'm looking forward to listening because I always learn something every day when I listen to the apostles, elders, elder bishops, other brothers, I always pick up something. I was listening to Elder Possible Bar video this morning about uh, Adam and Eve. I forget what the title of it was. His last latest video, or maybe the one before that, you know, <clears throat> about the knowledge of good and evil. And I was like, you know, I thought I knew all that stuff. And he heard it say, I was like, wait a minute, what? Ah, <sighs> this is arrows of indignation. Deuteronomy 4 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and you shall be left fewer number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. It's a centralized theme throughout even the New Testament. We've been scattered everywhere. We understand the reason that those branches, even though we got the precepts to it, the branches that are broken, is talking about who? It's talking about the Israelite foreigners, not the other nations. But you know what? I'm going to say this. People may get mad. To me, the shit be looking suspicious. Every group got to pop up with their damnable heresy because that's part of their contract with Esau, man. I don't give a damn what nobody say. I just know what the Spirit is showing me. It looked like them guys on the tape, you know, you can get mad, say whatever you want to say. <clears throat> uh, that's what I believe. I think they get the 501 C3 and they just hadn't revealed it. That's what I believe. And at a time it's supposed to come out, it'll come out. And if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. I can be wrong. But either way, either you on the take, right? And you work for the damn devil, or are you just too damn stupid and the Holy Spirit ain't dealing with you at all, which both ways you still two thirds. Period. Virgin out of the straight gate, Matthew 12 and 30. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathers not with me scattereth abroad. And that's confusion what you're teaching over there. You scatter it abroad. And I, I have more precepts that I'm going to go into. But really, when you go to Romans 11, you just need to look no further. Who are the branches? The branches is talking about all of that that's up there above it. It speak, them branches are speaking of that. So who are the branches? You ain't got no precepts to prove otherwise. No scriptures, even if you thought you did. It's ridiculous. The Elder Apostle Gabar said the daily ed daily edification exhortation three to think to think that every last one of the members of the northern kingdom came to the Americas during Assyrian captivity is not accurate 
some members of the tribe were left in Israel. You always had scattering of the other tribes left around each other. You know, Jake act like, I don't know. Hey, Shalom, Elder Manasseh is out. 2 Corinthians 4 and 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Hamashiach should shine unto them. That's right. If the gospel is here, it's here to them that are lost. And we can't really do nothing about it. We can get mad, you know, we get mad in our, you know, in our flesh or whatever. There it is. We get mad in our flesh, but we know at the end of the day, it's a spiritual thing when men can't get, you know, the truth. When the spirit ain't dealing with them, dealing with them on something. The Lord even told us that. He was going to send the spirit of truth. Let's grab that and then we'll, we'll shut it down. What I wanted to say, I said it already. I didn't want to do nothing too long. I just wanted to. It was burning me real bad, you know. Um, let's see. <clears throat> so this is uh John fourteen. Sixteen. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. And some of them people are two-third Israelites. All Israelites can't get this. This is just for the elect. That's period, point blank. You know, we can't get mad at people that can't get it. It is what it is. And Elder Possible Bar said that. Remember, Anna was of the tribe of Asher, and she lived in Jerusalem. Absolutely. You know, now them guys was maintaining that it wasn't talking about the northern kingdom. You know, like the northern kingdom have nothing to do with that. Now, like I said, Great Millstone, we don't exclusively teach that the olive tree and the wild olive tree wanted to talk about the northern kingdom. We we never said that. I never heard the apostles say that. It's always the Israelites scattered to all the nations. You know, if I'm correct on that. Anyway, brothers, the water for joining in. You know, for uh, putting your scriptures on the comment board and your thoughts. I really appreciate it. But, you know, <clears throat> I got to go ahead and shut it down. We'll see you again soon with another lesson, Lord willing. Like I said, I'm sure you'll hear more about this from different brothers, elders, apostles, you know, what have you. So I spoke on it. And, you know, you may see more videos pop up. I may want, you know, the spirit might get on me and just do another video. It just depends. I, I don't think I can go and watch that HOI video. You know, I can't sit through that. But we'll see what the spirit you know what the spirit do so to water everybody for coming we'll see you again soon with another lesson lord willing all praise to yahweh bahashem yahweh shah bahashem rakakadash double honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone shalom to the hopefully elect see you again soon lord willing shalom